Um, look, I'm going. Our next speaker is Peter McAvoy, but I'm conscious we are now. We don't have the food here. I, look, in the spirit of Q and A, because that's of course where Peter McAvoy is from. He's the executive producer of Q and A. I was going to put it to the vote whether or not we have lunch now, or whether we have it after his presentation. That's been resolved because lunch isn't here yet. So can you please welcome our next speaker, Peter McAvoy, the executive producer of Q and A from the ABC. Okay, look, thanks very much. I'm, I'll um, try and get through that. I mean, basically, I suppose, in a lot of ways, what I'm really here to do is perhaps to um, canvas and ask for uh, your assistance with uh, what we do at Q&A. Um, so that doesn't necessarily need to take too long. Um, I want to talk to you about building partnerships between old media and new media. Uh, I was first asked to uh, take on the role of setting up a discussion program for the ABC back in 2007. Um, at the time, it wasn't something that sort of filled me with joy. In fact, my heart sank a little bit because I don't generally like discussion programs. But uh, <laughs> don't tell no one, no one, don't tell anyone else outside this room. <laughs> but um, luckily, the uh, the call to become involved came while I happened to be uh, studying in Oxford. Uh, and it was 2007, and I was very excited by some of the things I was seeing, in particular things that uh, my society was involved in, and I was becoming uh, addicted to the They Work For You website. And so when I came to think about what sort of program Q&A should be, uh, although Q&A has a lot of similarities to you know, other discussion programs that have existed here in Australia and other parts of the world, um, my initial starting point for putting the program together was in fact a website, they work for you. And some of the features of that website you know, migrated uh, pretty quickly to the website that now exists for uh, Q&A, which you can see behind me there. Um, I'd been to hear my society's Tom Steinberg talk about uh, Web 2.0. Uh, and one of the uh, ideas that he put up that I found really very useful was to, to talk about the difference between accelerators and tool makers. Accelerators are people who provide you with more blogs, more opinions, more media, more newspapers, more celebrities. Toolmakers are people who set about providing users with tools so that they can organise themselves, access information. Uh, the toolmakers at my society were involved in a lot of interesting projects that I, I, found, uh, I found fascinating. Um, projects like Pledge Bank where people can organise themselves together to donate money or do a working bee at the, their local park. Um, tools that allow people to find out what their local MP is doing, uh, to contact their MP. Um, people who can, tools that allow people to organise themselves more effectively as citizens. And that, that's the kernel and the, the model for what, what Q&A is about. So um, from Q&A's point of view, rather than being a television program that developed later on, we added a website to it, it was a television program that, that really had its origins in a lot of way to what was already happening uh, on the web in sites like They Work For You. Now, some people did express doubts about whether Australians would be interested in being involved in a project like Q&A. People said that Australians weren't engaged enough, weren't articulate enough, weren't well-educated enough, you know, that, all might, that things like that might work in England, but here in Australia, are people really interested in politics? I'm glad to say that that's been comprehensively proved wrong. Uh, Q&A has been uh, a great success in television terms. Uh, it regularly attracts more than half a million people in the sort of five-city ratings term that uh, most TV programs are judged in. And that means that you know several hundred thousand people each week are looking at a live debate between politicians and opinion makers, a debate that they can be engaged in, they can ask questions in, they can set the agenda for. Uh, and making that program a success. And they're involved in all sorts of ways. Not only people who watch TV, but the enormous number of people who want to come and be in the audience and have the opportunity to ask live questions, the people who want to send us questions, whether they want to upload videos, send us web questions, SMS questions to us, they want to send us satirical videos. They want to be engaged in all sorts of different ways. And basically the principle that we tried to follow is to open ourselves to as many of those opportunities as we can. We've also been attracting a growing Twitter commentary on the program. Um, you know, we managed to sort of multiply that very quickly just by putting up a hashtag. Um, and so, you know, thousand, a thousand people or more each week are giving their live commentary on what's going on in the program. So 
from the start, I've been keen to build relationships uh, and collaborations with citizens who share our interest in encouraging political participation through new media. And I was very excited to find that when I came back to Australia, that the ideas of my society were already here. People were actually already working on uh, reformatting that uh, open source software um, through Open Australia to set up a, a similar project here in Australia so that the information, the enormous amount of information that's at the um, aph.gov uh, website, which is almost impossible to navigate, um, as anyone who's ever logged on to it would know, um, is now being reformatted in a way that's far more useful for our ordinary citizens. And so, you know, I'm very glad that um, I've been working on a collaboration with Open Australia since, uh, since before the program started. Now, one thing, though, that I, I think that um, we need to recognise amidst all of our enthusiasm for new digital media is that there still is a mass media out there and it still has a great significance as, for example, Kevin Rudd, Malcolm Turnbull, Wayne Swan um, and uh, Godwin Gresh all realise today. Uh, the mass media has a mass impact and so I think it's very important that not only the, the people from the mass media, such as the ABC like myself, look to new media for opportunities and new tools and new possibilities that we can provide for our audiences, but also the people in the new media look for collaborations that they can arrive at with mass media to take advantage of the, the strength and the oomph and the impact that mass media has. I think that um, old and new media are most effective when they collaborate together. And uh, let me just cite one quick British example that's going on at the moment. People may know that um, My Society and They Work For You had an important role in the um, initial push for transparency about British MPs' expenses um, over in the UK. That's something that they were pushing along, but it's something that really didn't take off, and the, the, the sky didn't actually fall in at Westminster until the mainstream media took that up because they were able to get hold of a, a leaked copy of those expenses and work through them and release it in bits and pieces and, and create the, um, the MPs ex, uh, expenses scandal that uh, we've all witnessed in the UK over uh, recent weeks. Now we're coming to a situation where that information is, is going back out to volunteers to work on because the uh, British Parliament has released PDFs of all of the expenses information, but of course, it's these are, these are, sorry, not PDFs, scans of the paper copies of the, uh, the information about um, MPs' expenses. But of course, that's impossible to search, impossible to work through. And so the Guardian newspaper has set up a uh, crowdsourcing journalism project where they're publishing all 471,153 pages of these scanned documents and inviting their readers and users to, to go through those documents looking for interesting facts. When I checked a little while ago, there were still 291,743 pages that hadn't been checked. So there's an opportunity to get involved if you'd like to. Now, uh, Mark Scott hasn't authorised me to um, make any mega deals today or authorise any crowdsource projects here. But I can tell you that in my particular corner of the ABC, in television public affairs, we are very interested in collaborating with clever people who have bright ideas about how Australians can become more involved in their political process. Uh, I think that encouraging active citizen, citizenship is absolutely core business for the ABC. And if you've got an idea about a way that um, we can use the web, a way that we can use Twitter, um, an application, a way that uh, open sourced uh, projects can be somehow married with what we're doing at, at Q&A or a way we could do our website better or anything, you know, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, I'll be around here for the rest of uh, the afternoon. Thank you very much. And if, you, oh, if you've got any questions, I'm glad to take them now too. Um, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, I do know that there are some questions coming through um, the Twitter feed. Uh, what we're asking the speakers to do is review that, given we're short of time here, and go back and respond to those questions. The other thing I'd like to say before we break for lunch 
is that I said at the start that after today we compile all of the information from the Twitter feed, the blog, the presentations themselves, the slideshows, we'll put a report together on a wiki. We need all of you to have a look at that wiki and participate in a final report and that report uh, will of course be delivered, no doubt with some fanfare, will generate something to the new Government 2.0 task force because the, the material that's being discussed today and worked through today I think is essential reading for that new body. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. We're going to come back at one o'clock, ten minutes late, but we're going to have lunch now. Thank you very much for your attention during the morning.